Hi, and welcome to the IBM SVC Data Collection and Measurement course. My name is Brett Allison, and I'm the Director of Technical Services at IntelliMagic. Today, I will be guiding you through this presentation. The purpose of this course is to provide a practical guide to conducting performance analysis on IBM's SAN Volume Controller Block Level Virtualization Appliance. As such, we'll discuss the key common bottlenecks, the how and why of SVC measurement, and then we'll take a look at the measurement of individual SVC components, including nodes, managed disks, storage pools, and volumes. In reality, bottlenecks can occur at any layer of the IT infrastructure, from the host, through the fabric, to the SVC, and then on the backend storage system. Bottlenecks at any of these layers can impact hosts and the host I.O. performance. Common bottlenecks on the host include multipathing or host adapter or host adapter port contention. Within the fabric, it's very common to have ISL congestion when intra-switch links are used to connect hosts and the storage or to connect SVC and the storage. At the SVC layer, it's common to see front-end imbalances or bottlenecks, cache limitations, CPU limitations, and in some cases, back-end response time issues. For the back-end storage that's virtualized, it's not uncommon to see front-end ports that are overutilized, cache shortages, CPU, or actual back-end disk bottlenecks. Again, bottlenecks at any layer in the path can contribute to SVC host latency. So bottlenecks can occur for a few reasons, and we're going to look at a few of those. The front-end ports, that's usually caused because there's some kind of overcommitment to a port or a node or an IO group, or there's replication issues. And this can happen when there's imbalances in the environment, or the environment's just trying to do more work than it's capable of doing. This will result in poor or inconsistent IO response time. Another common bottleneck is managed storage controller front-end ports. So these are the front-end ports on the back-end disk storage. These can become constrained when you've oversubscribed to the storage controller host adapter or ports. This will result in poor managed disk queue and response time and high port response time on the front-end ports of the back-end controller. Another symptom is back-end disk drives being highly utilized. This can result from invalid storage pool or MDIS, or really just too many IOs per spindle. The symptom of this is poor back-end managed disk queue and response times. Another type of bottleneck that we discussed was the cache. This can happen when there's cache hostile applications such as large data warehouses or backups or antivirus software or things that do lots of sequential activity. Typically, this results in low read-hit ratios for hosts accessing the storage on the SVC. Another bottleneck is the host multipathing issues, and the way these may manifest are IO response times on the host being higher than expected or inconsistent. This can result from incorrect multipathing software configuration, or for example, in an IBM stretch cluster when the primary access for a volume is on the remote SVC node. And lastly, fabric and ISL contention can be a result of poor design ISLs or oversubscribed hardware. This will result in poor or inconsistent front end and or back end response time on the SVC. In this section, we'll take a look at the IBM SVC components and their associated measurements. What components can we measure? SVC provides numerous measurements such as volumes or VDISC, managed disks, and node statistics. These can be combined with logical configuration information to provide information for other components, such as storage pools. IntelliMagic Vision provides measurement of the nodes, the node ports, volumes, storage pools, as well as managed disks. So how can you measure the IBM SVC? Well, there's a couple different approaches. You can use native interfaces, such as the command line interface. You can also use SMIS, which is a standard management interface. The thing to know about the SMIS interface, though, is that it does provide a subset of the overall data available within the native commands. The native SVC statistics provide a very rich source of data. There are many that I can talk about, but I'll list a few. Front-end ports. For the front-end ports, you can see the PPRC, SCSI, local, in-band, and read-and-write 
I.O. operation breakdown and throughput. At the node level, we can see the CPU utilization, the read and write throughput, the read and write I.O. rate, and the intranode traffic and latency. At the VDISC level, we're able to see the read and write throughput, I.O. rate, read and write latencies, as well as cache hits. We can also see at the VDISC level, PPRC tracks sent and received. At the MDISC level, we can see queue time, latency, read and write throughput, and I.O. rates. For a very detailed look at what statistics are available, please reference the IBM URL in this document. Intellimagic Vision does rely on these native statistics to provide the detailed analysis. This table lists the statistics available within the SMIS interface. It is a subset of the statistics available in the native interface. The primary element or component that's missing is the port information. This section contains an overview of the SVC node measurements. The nodes are the physical hardware of the IBM SVC. They contain the processors, cache, ports, internal disk that run the SVC firmware and connect all of the logical components, such as the storage pools, managed disks, volumes, and I.O. groups, with their physical resources. Measurements include cache statistics, throughput, I.O. rate, CPU, and intranode latency. The nodes run the software and provide I.O. processing, memory, buffering, and connectivity. The processors provide the compute power for processing all of the I.O. operations. When the node's processors are overutilized, the I.O. response times will suffer. The memory serves as both a read and write I.O. cache. The read percentage by node and the fast write by node provide a good idea how healthy the node's cache is in relationship to the workload. The fiber ports provide connectivity and communication between attached hosts, their backend storage, and other SVC nodes. They can facilitate communication between peer storage clusters for the purpose of replication activities or for stretch clustering. Nodes have a robust set of measurements for both the front end and the back end, as well as individual CPU utilization. Consider running your nodes and their associated components at no more than 50% during online periods. That way, when you perform firmware upgrades, or if you have a node failure, your cluster will not be severely impacted by the performance. IntelliMagic does provide node-specific dashboards, and that is what sh is shown in this slide. These highlight any performance issues or potential issues with regards to the IBM SVC nodes, and they allow you to quickly drill down to the workloads that are driving the performance exceptions. It is quite possible to have response time issues on a single node. This chart illustrates the node write response time is very high for the node ending in 05. There can be a number of reasons for this, but it's typically associated with one or more volumes having poor response time due to either port contention or replication or sometimes fabric contention. One of the most important things to manage in an SVC environment is the balance of the workload across the nodes and the port resources. This chart, which is what we call a balance chart, shows how well balanced the throughput is across an eight node SVC cluster. In this example, the green dot represents the average throughput, the green rectangle represents the 10th and the 90th percentiles, and the yellow rectangle represents the minimum and maximum node throughput. One of the keys in maximizing performance is to make sure that the nodes are continuously balanced. A best practice is to review the node throughput on a weekly basis, and if there are significant persistent imbalances, make sure that you make adjustments by moving volumes from busier nodes to less busy nodes within the same I.O. group, or if necessary, across I.O. groups. Similar to the node balance, within the nodes, we would like to see that the ports are fairly evenly balanced. In this example, we show a host with six ports, only four of them are active. The iSCSI port and the fifth and sixth port are inactive at this time. The balance that we see on the active ports is good, but we would like to see activity across all of the available traffic, especially if those active ports are running at a very high load. While SVC provides a robust set of node measurements for both the front end and the back end, as well as individual node CPU utilization, understanding the internal bandwidth utilization does require some internal knowledge of 
the SVC components. Direction can model the bandwidth utilization, although we cannot measure it. The throughput thresholds within IntelliMagic Vision do provide guidelines to avoid overdriving the internal bandwidth and prevent high response times. In this section, we'll discuss the storage pool and their measurements. This slide is meant to be a reminder of what storage pools are and how they fit into the logical architecture. Just as a reminder, the managed disks provide storage from either internal SVC disk or back-end storage that's been virtualized. Those managed disks are provided to the SVC. SVC makes storage pools from that data, which are then carved into volumes or virtual disks and provided access to through the IO groups to the hosts. In reality, there are not any storage pool native measurements. But what we can do is we can roll up the VDISC and MDISC related components. These provide tremendous insight into the health of the SVC ecosystem. It's important to understand how they relate to the user experience. The front end response times are roughly equivalent to what is experienced by the user. Therefore, they should be closely monitored. The back end response times report the response times as seen by the SVC in its communications with the back end storage. High back end storage system times will impact eventually the front end response times, particularly for read miss activity. Both the front end and the back end response times should be mo monitored closely. This chart provides a sample of the key storage pool availability metrics. It includes the IO rate, the front end response time, the front end read response time, the read hit percentage, the front end write response time, the fast write bypass, and the response time for D stages. So in a single view, you can see whether or not performance is good or bad to either the front end or the back end of a storage pool. By drilling down on the problem storage pool rank 0104, we can see the key availability metrics over time along with their individual rated charts. This view facilitates visual pattern recognition. It's important to see if spikes in the throughput or I.O. rate correlated with response time increases or if the response time increases related inversely to a drop in the read hit percentage. By selecting any chart and drilling down, user can quickly see which volumes are affected and or causing the elevated response times. In this chart, we see high read response times and they correlate to the period where the read hit rates were low. We also see high response time for stages or reads from the back end. This indicates that the elevated read response times are primarily influenced by the cache unfriendly nature of the workload and the impact to the back end storage system. The exception or balance chart provides the user in a single glance with a pane to view the performance of the storage pools within a cluster. This shows the average storage pool throughput per storage pool, as well as the 10th and 90th percentile and the minimum and maximum values. This can be useful when trying to understand how well balanced the workload is across the available storage pools. This is particularly useful when storage pools have a similar hardware composition and purpose. In this section, we'll discuss the measurements for the managed disks. As a quick refresh, the managed disks represent LUNs that are externalized from another storage system or possibly internal SVC disks. Managed disk measurements consist of response times, queue times on the SVC, throughput, and I.O. rates. Natively, the queue time includes the external response time, which is the amount of time spent waiting on the I.O. prior to being sent to the backend controller, plus the response time or service time for the I.O. operation. IntelliMagic Vision subtracts out the response time or service time so that we can identify real quickly and easily if there are back-end queuing situations. This SVC back-end dashboard shows the key measurements for the managed disks. External read response time, external write response time, external overall queue time, external read queue time, and external write queue time. The external queue time, as mentioned before, is the amount of time spent waiting for a write or a read to be sent downstream. This indicates that there's a problem with the back-end storage system responding to the SVC. Rank 272, 273, and 274 all show very high queue time and response times. The next step is to drill down and see on which storage system they reside on. This SVC back-end dashboard shows the key measurements for the managed disks. External read response time, external write response time, 
external overall queue time, external read queue time, and external write queue time. The external queue time, as mentioned before, is the amount of time spent waiting for a write or a read to be sent downstream. This indicates that there's a problem with the backend storage system responding to the SVC. The next step is to drill down on the storage pools that we're concerned with. In this example, I'm going to drill down on storage pool SP underscore F. By drilling down on the individual managed disks within a storage pool, we can see if there's any managed disks that stand out. I'm going to drill down on managed disk 211. In drilling down, I'm going to drill down to the backend storage volumes. Every managed disk on the SVC correlates or corresponds to a unique storage controller volume. By selecting the managed disk to drill down on, we can determine if the read response time concern that surfaced on the SVC is also showing in the front end response times of the back end storage controller. In this case, the response time of the volume that corresponds to MDIS 211 is roughly the same as what was observed on the SVC. This means that the back end storage controller is struggling to keep up with the SVC. This may be a result of the front end port constraint on the back end storage controller or back end constraints and will need further investigation. If the response time observed on the back end volumes is significantly lower than what's being observed on the SVC, then there is fabric contention likely. In this section, we'll discuss the SVC VDIS or volumes and their measurements. The volumes are provided by coalescing extents from storage pools. Hosts access the volumes through IO groups that they are zoned to. Key volume measurements include read and write response times, read and write throughput, read and write IO rates, cache hit rates, and fast write bypasses. VDIS response times should be similar to what the host observes using native utilities like IOSTAT and SAR on Unix and Perfmon on Windows. When the response times on the native host utilities are higher than the response time observed at the SVC layer, this typically indicates issues with host adapter constraints, fabric constraints, multipathing issues, or possibly queue depth settings. The best way to illustrate identifying a problem with a volume is to look at the SVC front end dashboard. In this case, I've got a high level rollup basically of any underlying issues. And in this case, I see there is a problem with response times on SVC 01. So I'm in the subsequent charts, I'm going to drill down. This is at the SVC cluster level. We can see through the process of drilling down that the front end response times that are high are related to a storage pool called SVC01 underscore G01 underscore 01. In the next slide, we will drill down to the volume level and identify the volumes that are contributing to the exception. As we drill down, we clearly see that the volume that we're looking for is VMware 005. We can tell because it's in bold and it has a high rating, a rating of 1.0, indicates that the volume's read response time spent at least a third of the time above the exception or 100% of the time above the warning. For more detailed information on the rating, the way the ratings work within IntelliMagic, please consult some of our other webinars. As discussed previously, there can be any number of reasons for high volume read response time. In this case, we've identified the volume name, VMware 005. It appears to be a VMware data store. In this environment, the SVC is part of a stretched cluster. What this means is that some of the nodes are local on one site and some of the nodes are local on the other site. Hosts should be mapped to, ho to nodes that are local to where they're located. In this case, the odd numbered clusters service the G site and the even numbered cluster nodes service the DR site. In this case, the volume, which is part of a G storage pool, is set to use node 2, which is in the DR site as its preferred node. The traffic should be going through one of the odd number nodes on the G site. So in order to improve the read response time, the VMware administrator will need to select a path that is local to the node. In conclusion, IntelliMagic Vision provides robust support for IBM's SVC and other enterprise storage systems. IntelliMagic Vision provides both the deep visibility into the performance measurements and easy drill downs. IntelliMagic Vision provides the necessary visibility to identify all your SVC storage performance bottlenecks.